So, can you hear me now? Yes. Perfect. Okay. We're going to try and work through this together. It, it's a great problem to have that we have so many people who have shown up for this town hall. This is our second town hall that we have had on environmental issues and climate change. So we had one last week at the Brickworks, and it was was sold out. We added more seats, and it sold out again. And that really confirmed what I had noticed throughout the election when I was knocking on doors as well, which was that the environment is one of the most important issues for people across all of our communities across Toronto, Danforth. If there was one issue that came up consistently across all communities, it was that people had concerns about climate change. And, and so we decided after the second, what happened is we had the town hall sold out, then sold out again when we added extra seats. We thought we should give people another chance locally to come out. And so thank you for coming out on short notice for this climate change town hall. Uh, there will be opportunity, we'll put it up on the board for you. Um, there is an opportunity also to submit your, um, your opinions, comments, questions online. So we'll, we'll give you that as well so that you have that as a take home. What we will be doing is I'm going to give you a brief outline about what, uh, what we've been doing and what we're hoping to achieve with these town halls. Then we're going to have um, a chance for you guys to provide some input and conversation about what you're doing. While you're providing your feedback, we will be taking notes. And those notes and the summary of the notes that we derive from those notes will be put up on my website. If you've had given your email address, we will email it to you so that you see exactly what we're putting forward and what was said at this town hall. Uh, that way, you know, it, it's out there for you to see. And, and that way, you know, historically, if you're like, I don't remember, what, what did we talk about last year at the town hall? It'll be up there for you to check out. So why don't we just get started on the first part? What I really want is to hear from you. So I'll do my quick little bullet point. Um, yeah, so this says basically everything that I said. So we can go to the next one. <laughs> so um, this, these are um, slides that are provided for use across Canada, across all communities. I don't think that this one is, is going to be highly controversial here, which is that climate change is real. Um, so. You know, so that basically we're setting up the basic that the scientific evidence is clear. Uh, global temperatures have already increased by about 0.85 Celsius since 1880. Canada has warmed by 1.6 Celsius, about twice the global average. And Canada's north is warming even more quickly. That's a particular concern for our northern communities as far as food and, and all sorts of issues that they're facing as their communities are changing drastically. Um, and Canada's emissions are projected to increase if significant action is not taken. So essentially that's, that's a call to action, which is we, we know and are aware that significant action is, is needed. So, uh, so um, we signed an agreement, the Paris Agreement, in December 2015 with 194 countries uh, to fight climate change. The countries agreed to limit the global average temperature rise to below 2 degrees Celsius, as well as to pursue efforts to limit the increase to 1.5 degrees. Uh, the important part about this is that the agreement, the agreement involved countries, you know, developing countries as well as countries that are, are far along the path of industrialization. So it involved countries trying to lend support to one another as well as part of this agreement. And that, that was the fundamental part of the Paris Agreement. So, um, you will have observed some of this. Some of this we don't necessarily see quite as much always here. But more extreme weather events. Uh, I, I'm just going to highlight one thing in Toronto Danforth. That's a particular concern because we're on the edge of the Don River. Uh, and so, you know, extreme weather events are like a hurricane hazel could produce flooding in Leslieville area and south end of our riding. So, that's something that we will see as well. Longer and more extensive heat waves and fewer cold spells, thawing permafrost, which is what I was mentioning about in the north in particular being impacted. Earlier river ice breakup, increased precipitation over large parts of Canada, more snowfall in the northwest Arctic, earlier spring runoff, and uh, indigenous people of the Arctic are at risk because of threatened local food choices and infrastructure. 
So um, when I mention all of this, I, I should mention that we recently released a budget, maybe not so recently, but toward the end of March, and there were parts in our budget that sought to already take action on many of these issues. Um, so, for example, in northern communities, a lot of them are off the grid and reliant on diesel and types of fuel. And there is funding to try and create other sources to try and help um, some of these northern communities already to, to get other resources. Um, so, there are some things we also do have parts of our budget to deal with build, building in climate change resilience for our cities. Um, and as we go through some of the other slides, I'll, I'll point out some of the other things where there's already, there are already some actions in our budget that we have targeted. So, Canada's greenhouse gas emissions can be broken down. Waste and others, oil and gas um, is 26%, electricity 11%, transportation 23%, other industries, that's a little bit of more, so can't really describe it too well, but 10%. Buildings, 12%. That was that was a surprise for me to see that number. Um, agriculture, 10%. So waste and others was seven. Um, so some of the things, for example, that are already happening on, for example, for buildings, um, we are, when we're talking about doing maintenance and retrofits as part of our social infrastructure for affordable housing, part of what we are doing is that we are specifically investing in retrofitting. Um, buildings so that they are more resilient and that they are better, that they will not be causing as many emissions. So that's one part. Transportation, I mean, there are lots of different forms of transportation, but um, there is money in there to put in um, regulations to try and encourage reduced um, reduced emissions from different forms of, tra of uh, transportation, sorry. So there is already something in action to try and build in different standards and regulations, the first step. Um, there is also money for uh, trying to uh, reduce the number of emissions and to try and encourage clean tech when looking at the oil and gas industry. Um, there is, from the transportation side, a lot of investments being put into electric cars and electric charging stations. So there, I, I don't want to go through all the numbers because numbers can get a little bit boring, but I do recommend if you're very interested in seeing the breakdown that you take a look at the budget because there was a whole section of the budget that was specifically targeted to trying to tackle some of these emissions of the first step. Um, and these are the current greenhouse gases. As you can see, it's, I'm going to, they're different colored lines. So, the black line in the middle is our best guess of how Canada's emissions will change between now and 2030. That black line you can see is 768 to 815. The red line above is a projection based on higher than expected economic growth. So that you can see goes up to 875. And the blue line at the bottom is a projection based on lower than expected economic growth. So that's the 765. So that gives you an idea of, of what we need to do if we're trying to meet targets and to reduce our 2020 targets to 22. Um, you know what? You, you have some of this information at your table, so I don't necessarily need to read to you all of the different actions that have um, come up here. Uh, what I highlight like, the Paris Agreement that I've already mentioned. What I think is one of the most important parts, because quite truthfully, a lot of the steps that we need to take to tackle climate change are fall within provincial jurisdictions. And so one of the most important pieces to this puzzle is to have the federal and provincial sitting at the tables together and with our territories as well and talking about what we're going to do as far as next steps. Federally, we cannot do it alone. And in fact, we really do need to get that discussion around the table. That's something that's been missing for quite a while. And so it's quite a strong step in the right direction to have had a chance to sit down with ministers and in premiers from different provinces in our territories and to actually make commitments to, to deal with climate change in a very proactive way. So, next slide. Right, so the first ministers meeting created four working groups 
to develop options for Canada's approach on climate change. Uh, the working groups are actually already they're in place and they should be reporting. They should be reporting soon. So they are looking at mitigation. So how and where to reduce emissions, clean technology, innovation and jobs, ideas for new technology and job creation, carbon pricing, putting a price on carbon, and adaptation and resilience, which is preparing for the impact of climate change. Um, I will highlight the carbon pricing wasn't an easy thing to necessarily get everyone to the table to agree to study. So just the fact that everyone is working together on a working group on that is, is a step where we're, we have people committed to looking at it across the country for all jurisdictions. And in the process, I think I went through most of this with you as because our process, this, this town hall is part of two processes. So there is a national climate change uh, consultation that's happening, and this is part of that. But it is also a local town hall, and so it is a two, two pronged thing, what I see. This one really focuses on the national, which is that yes, we will be putting this forward to the Minister of the Environment um, and Climate Change, as you can see. But it's also your chance to talk with me as your representative locally, because then when I'm involved in the house and different issues come to me, I can, I can just speak back and say, well, when I was meeting and talking with people in this community, this is what they were telling me. So th this slide focuses a little bit, I think, too much on the national. All of that is going to happen. We will be forwarding it. But we'll also be posting it locally, like I said, and it's a chance for me to hear what people in the community are thinking. Which brings us to the actual consultation happening. These are some questions that we'll leave up on the board for you to think about. But what we would like now, if you're all sitting at tables, to take, um, how much time are we going to do this first? Why don't we do it? Yeah. Why don't we do it about about 20 minutes, um, 15 to 20 minutes? We'll start that way because it then gives people a chance to talk. Um, sit in your groups and talk about what are some of the key issues that you would like to raise about finding solutions for climate change. So I, I think we're we're well aware of what the problems are. You know, that, that, that that's been highlighted. But the question is, how do we get to the right place from here? And, and so, sure, I, I'll take your question in a second, but just a chance to try and think of what, what some of the best solutions are for each table, and then we will ask one person from each table to share those thoughts, and and then we can move forward from there after that. Okay? Um, thanks? Yep. Yeah, that was a perfect segue. Um, do you have any paper that we can maybe drop the things out of hand into afterwards? Because I'm sure we won't be able to capture the full answer of that. Yeah, question. we will get paper to all of you to take notes, absolutely. Um, I may be a minority of one, 